Hits and Crits. This video is brought to you by Asmodee. What is up, YouTube? Last but not least, we have the Boltons. Uh, probably a faction which is, you know, um, I would say when it came out was pretty popular. Everyone was ordering the starter. Everyone wants to, you know, because the Boltons were out there on the neutrals and when the... The starter box finally came out. We were all pretty excited. And I think, you know, Randall, it was the same for you, right? You were always excited. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I think they're still a really popular faction. I, so you know, even in, given their current state, I would say they're yeah. still a very popular faction. Yeah. Yeah. So so even better that we got some changes uh, in, in S5, e, uh, even though it were not, not, not big, but we will... Um, show show them all off and we'll always we'll trying to make the best out of it and um i think i think some changes are quite interesting and um yeah to tip those things off i can just say i really appreciate that the bolton commanders are now changed from the neutral bolton commanders mm -hmm. that's the thing that i really appreciate so you basically get a you know, there's an incentive to use Bolton commanders instead of neutral Bolton commanders, which is good. So yep. I really like about like like this um, about it. So before we start in, I can I um, invite all of you to uh, consider to support us to bring alive a great pro uh, projects like our play mats, um, um, which have all the deployment zones, the objective tokens, and a tactics mat b beside it. You can also like order just the tactics mat, and it has all the all the places, everything you need to set up your games quickly and uh, have everything you need to uh, play song efficiently on a nice battlefield with all uh, the help you can get. Um, okay. So please consider to become a Patreon to bring this and content and all the stuff we do alive. So Randall, let's ju uh, let's now jump into where do we come from in S four? Maybe you can tip us off. Yeah. So so in season four we were down <laughs> like here, and I think yeah. in season five we're like right about there. Yeah. So you know the Boltons have been in a bad spot since release and they've slowly been getting incremental changes so yeah you know, to the developers credit they have been buffing the Bol boltons uh every every patch with mm. with something uh mm. and i don't think anybody can deny that the changes in this patch are all like 100 positive so yeah uh, boltons are in a bad spot there's not too much to say but they are moving up yeah, exactly. But what 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 do you think is the main reason for this? Like when or when 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 my, my impression is the main reason why Boltons are in a not not like like impressive state right now is they are really missing like a hard 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 hitting unit that can also stay on the battlefield for a while. And uh, so I mm. really appreciate the changes we will see later. Um but that, for me, that's one of the reasons. Because when you check the base deck, this is quite a... It's not a bad base deck, right? The base deck is, is decent, if not good. Um, so mm -hmm. what do you think? What's your um, what's your take on why why are they the least faction on the list? Yeah, so if you look at their combat units, they have, what is it, five combat units? They have Cutthroats, Spearmen, mm -hmm. Blackguard, uh, Bastard Girls, mm -hmm. Flayed Men... Did I say archers already? Archers, maybe so. Five think, or six think, units. Yeah, yeah five to six. Yeah. Um, but all but two of those units are also neutral units, and those neutral units and the Bolton versions are identical. So hmm. it's like most of the Bolton's army is uh, designed around uh, balancing, being balanced with every other faction and any other army. So I, I think hmm. Bolton's units really need are really need like a Bolton version of everyone identity of so yeah yeah so like flayed men mm. flayed men have been getting nerfed over you know several patches they got nerfed uh, in a couple over a couple of patches uh, in the past and mm. part of that was because every single faction could take them and factions were taking multiple of them yeah but now we have a situation where boltons are here uh that's their own home cavalry unit but they're just as identical, like a Bolton Flayed yeah. is identical to a Flayed Man that's in a Baratheon list or something. So I think they just need some kind of pick-me-up, you know, like mm -hmm. Bolton Flayed Men could 
get some kind of ability where when on the charge, they give the unit a panic token or, you know, just some, some little thing like that where every single unit is a little bit more special than mm -hmm. their neutral counterpart, which I yeah. think is what the developers were trying to do by kind of nerfing the, the neutral version of Bruce and mm -hmm. Ramsey. So mm -hmm. hopefully in future patches, we'll see something kind of on the positive side uh, to that, to the faction so that yeah. the neutral version or the Bolton versions will get just a little bit of a, of a tweak in the, positive direction yeah that would be good the other reason i can think about is um across the board all all of these except the bolton best girls maybe they have pretty bad morale right um, yeah so like not average morale um and that can really really hurt them so this is mm -hmm. one of the achilles heels we we definitely see in boltons and that's a really obvious one so if your opponent plays against boltons a really easy thing to do is wear them down through the crown or is like doubling down on vicious units or you know triggering panic tests in some kind of way and when you do this quite often you will wear them down even though they have something like blackguard they have something like um the the flatman with the flatman. With, with three defense you will still mm -hmm. w wear them down with morale so that's probably yeah. another uh not not so easy thing for for this faction yeah so i guess i guess we gathered or we we caught everything so maybe we go to the changes quickly there over and done with doesn't everyone feel better i do that was getting very tense <laughs> yeah as he said, right? Uh, that's getting intense. So, but now we're getting positive again. So, okay, let's start with the base deck. There are no general changes for the Boltons, but there are base mm -hmm. deck changes. And uh, we have, we have. Let's start with harsh punishments. My most favorite card. Um, it's so called. It, it it it's a so called quest card or like you know the revenge card as some people say. Um, but this revenge card, like in each and every deck, except. I guess the Night's Watch um, and the Free Folk has this kind of card when something, you know, like is something is destroyed, you can attach the card until the end of the game. Harsh Punishments mm -hmm. actually does not need that trigger. You just have start of any turn, you just put it out there, and this unit gains Sundering and High Detector value until the end of the game, but it also... Um, suffers plus one wound from failing panic test. It used to be, an, or it used to have an instant effect where, uh, with this unit becoming, uh, uh, or become panicked right away. So they got this, yeah. they got this out of the way. Um, so this is um, a buff to the card. And um, I would say you need this card as early as possible um, to put it on, especially something like Flateman, Bolton Pass the Girls, cutthroats all these units are really benefiting from the card um yeah so i really like the change because you you can now way easier put it out there without you know hoping for the best in terms of like getting the crown zap right after or whatever so uh yeah i like the change what do you think yeah no i, I agree it's it's a positive change and you know it never felt good getting that panic token because you knew that the next enemy turn could just make use of that panic token and yeah. cost you like four wounds because yeah. now that you have a plus one wound so yeah this it's just a there's there's a potential future problem for you with the plus one wound but you know you have immediate the immediate benefits of sundering and highest attack die value mm -hmm. um I, it's unfortunate there's no way to really fish for this card or manipulate the deck really to get it in your hand faster uh, yeah. because this is one of those cards that you really want like as early as possible um yeah to play yeah yeah but true yeah, that's that's, a great change. yeah that's actually one thing i tell new players that start out with boltons i say you have to you you, you have to do the letters like all the time because this is your only thing you can get to those cards the other second mm -hmm. like the second two like for me the uh uh second two um harsh punishments the second most important card is uh cruel methods um because cruel methods will especially in like mid end game round three four even five gives you a great potential to heal back four wounds in one go. You just have to spend a panic, mm -hmm. and you and you heal four, f heal back four wounds. This is uh, yeah. tremendously effective when you have Blackguard in the middle, or you have Flatman engaged, dealing out their um, um, panic damage all the time, and you can heal them back at one certain um, 
like in one particular moment you can just heal them back four this is quite big right especially with the glory yeah. seeker maybe so um yeah so go on the ladders so the second one is fear keeps a man alive um the other healing card next to cruel methods in the base deck which is also really good so you have two um healing cards in the deck and this card just get uh, got the addition that uh, if that enemy is in short range of your commander's unit it restores plus one wound so basically it triggers when an enemy fails a panic test and all the wounds you do you can um, in long range just fuel all, all your units with these wounds and if it's in short range of your commander or it is your commander unit you heal plus one also a good buff when I read it the first time, I was instantly th thinking about Ruse Bolton in Blackguard sitting on a corpse pile on the middle objective, healing back for four or whatever wounds, right? What do yeah. you think, Randall? Yeah, it's a good, it's, I mean, it's, it's a really good card to have, like you said, for healing. There's a couple of healing cards. Adding the plus one wound for Commander being in short range just adds more opportunity for more heals. So like you said, let's say you have a, a Flademan unit engaged with somebody, they fail a panic test. Let's say they they roll a three on their D3. That's three plus one for intimidating presence, plus one wound for this fear keeps a man alive. And then let's just say that, you know, it's that miracle game where you're actually able to drop down a, uh, you know, a, a remorseless examples uh, corpse pile mm. and you get another plus one so you could yeah. potentially get yourself in a situation where you're healing six wounds with this one card uh, and then that's not even factoring in that you might have ramsey uh influence on that unit there for a fuel by slaughter heal so uh even though it is just plus one wound on this card now but it does just amplify that explosive healing potential that this card uh, can give you yeah the actual, the, like the, the Remorseless Examples card, this is actually, I don't know about you, but I feel, or I always felt this is probably the the, the worst card in the deck because it's yeah. it's a little, or it's a little bit too situational in, in my point mm -hmm. of view because, um, I mean, clearing an enemy rank is okay. The other one is destroy a full unit and only then you can put out this Grim Reminder corpse file. Um, yeah. yeah, you should probably, if you pull it out really early, just recycle it as fast as possible. If you, you know, if you pull it like, like in late game, five, six, late four, could be good. Um, but it's, 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 it's highly situational. Yeah. Um, I, I usually just trash it if I haven't yeah. used it for the, for the one panic token within exactly. that round. I just yeah. trash it. I trash it after the, yeah. the round yeah. is over. Yeah. All right, so that's on the base deck. Uh, we also got really good changes on the units, and maybe um, Randall, you can um, because as we discussed in, in like before that, when you compare Randall Bolton Commander and Chris Bolton Commander, Randall has quite a, a little bit more offensive play style on the Boltons, while I am more on the defensive side of things, like playing Ruse Black Guards kind of stuff. Sometimes two Black Guards stuff like that. That's what I do. <laughs> Um, Randall is more of the, on the side, like, you know, firing into, you know, friendly, friendly lines and, you know, <laughs> killing precision rerolls, everything. So maybe you're more you can... the Roos, the Roos Bolton style personality style yeah, commander. Like... And I'm, I'm more the Ramsey exactly. Bolton <laughs> style commander. Exactly. So maybe you can, uh, you can tell us, uh, how important the Dreadfort Archer changes, um, for us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. So the Dreadfort Archers got, they got one change to, just take away the one automatic wound that your engaged units would suffer after being fired into. So mm -hmm. it is only one wound, but then you also can think about it a little bit in the context of the changes to uh, the change to harsh punishments, you know, so it's overall, overall in this patch, you see a lot less self harm being done to Boltons. So, you know, let's say you're shooting into a unit that has harsh punishments on them. Harsh punishments is no longer giving them a, a panic token. So they may not have a panic token on them. You're firing into that unit with the archers. That unit isn't then taking the one auto wound. Uh, and then they have a better chance potentially of passing their panic test now that they may not have that panic token uh, from harsh punishment. So there's just kind of a general trend of doing less, kind of punching themselves in the face a little bit less in, uh, as a faction now. So uh, the Dreadfort archers now are really no more punishing on your own army than like the Stark Bowmen who can fire into their own 
melees without line of sight. So yeah. it's a it's a definitely a, a good change. Uh, you know, you you're still going to have the sour Allen self harm, but uh, that I don't I think that's a fair trade off. Anybody would you ask is will tell you that. But um, yeah. but yeah, the the one the one wound it is only one wound, but all these little one wounds really all add up. You know, the one plus one wound healing for fear keeps a man alive the mm. harsh punishments panic token going away this, this stuff all kind of goes together to, to make the faction more resilient and yeah there's even more of that uh, that we'll talk about in a bit yeah i was actually as you mentioned sour ellen i was actually expecting when i thought about what might come up in s5 i was actually uh thinking about there or i i was sure about it that sour ellen gets the may in there that you do not uh. have to right use sundering yeah. or crit blow that you may so you can still shoot but you um but you won't uh or you're not you know uh, not you're not forced to do it yeah so that, yeah, I don't that know if might a, also be a yeah. good change right yeah, i don't um, know if that was a design choice like sour allen is so yeah. crazy that no, yeah, no yeah, matter yeah. what he's gonna he's gonna do that i don't know if that was a design choice or just a a wording oversight you know with it, it could go either way <laughs> the way that some of these patch notes are written and some of the way these card changes are written sure. that could be a, a oversight or a or intentional design decisions so. yeah i mean lore wise i like it just saying this could be this would be a like like quite a good change for the archers um yeah so yeah all right, so on the Dreadfort Spearman. Dreadfort Spearman, a unit which we mostly see together with uh, probably Ramsey Commander a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, to double on set for charge, horrific visage. So it's really, you know, not appealing to attack the unit. Um, so the change basically is now um, that they added to, or like if, if, if a unit fails a panic test off the melee attack that this unit does, um, all enemies... Uh, in short range become panicked and now they edit if they are panicked they also become weakened um yeah. so this and it's is, if they kill a rank right it's not if uh yeah yeah exactly they... yeah, yeah 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 exactly when they kill a rank then uh, panicked and now it, an additional weakened probably so yeah. yeah what do you make of the dreadful spearmen i honestly i did not really play them more than maybe once or twice um so what do you make of them yeah i i agree i still haven't played them a lot uh because there's they're just not a very tough defensive unit and they're not a big damage dealer so you know you look at one point more taking blackguard or yeah. for the same points taking cutthroats who can do a lot more damage and it's it's hard to justify taking the dreadfort spearman I, I think this was a good change though because in in this faction this faction is all about panic tokens so there's you know a dozen different other sources of panic tokens you could uh, draw from in this army so mm. having the option to throw out a weakened token is good because this faction is kind of hurting for weakened tokens a little bit mm. you've got walda who can do it on a uh from claiming the crown you've got the skinner bastard boy attachment who can who can do it with uh whatever it is we can resolve or i can't remember what that ability is but the yeah the skinner attachment can hand them out uh but weakened tokens are a you know they are a defensive buff to your army so i think them being able to weaken in short range could potentially do a lot of uh assistance to holding down what could be an otherwise frail front line potentially um, so yeah, I, I think it's a very good change. You're, you're more likely with this change now to actually hand out tokens with this ability. So yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's good. I still, I'm not sure if I'm going to be taking them a lot, but I am yeah. anxious to, to try them out at least. Yeah. Sa same, same for me. Um, as I said, like the first sentence was the most important for me. One point more, you get blackguard and we all know mm -hmm. blackguard is quite a tough unit to crack. And, yeah. um, and, and it also goes well with the base deck. So for me, it's a hard, mm -hmm. that, that one, with that one point, I don't know. Maybe if you put in the the grunt, maybe to give them resilience or something that yeah. they might. Uh, but it's still. And now it's I a six point unit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just saying, just saying. Right. Okay. So, let's try them at least. Um. So the yep. changes on the commanders they are quite interesting. Um. Especially the prey on fear, and I think we all can relate. Uh, Ramsey Snow Commander, he only had Horrific Visage, and we all know he gets Reek for zero points, and Reek yeah. can basically panic everything in short range, but might die on a six. But still, 
himself, his attachment had only horrific visage, right? So now he got prey mm. on fear on top of that. And yeah, I I just think that makes him a lot more appealing as a commander, especially with his Bolton cards also, um, which we call later. Um, what do you think? Yeah, it, it makes whatever unit he's in more tanky, really. So, uh, or at least, you know, kind of proactively tanky a little bit because you have to make a unit fail a panic test. But, you know, you throw him, like we were just talking about the Spearman, you put him in a unit of Spearman, and now if somebody attacks you, if you're not engaged yet, you're going to be doing a separate charge attack against them. They might fail a panic test, heal you back. They have a horrific visage panic test. They could fail that, heal you back some more. Yeah. Also, let's not forget, it's just any unit you're engaged with. Yes. So you could be engaged, you know, two of your units could be engaged with the unit or your archers could fire into a unit and then they fail a panic test and you get healed up. So I think this Prey on Fear is uh, really great because now you can take Ramsey in some cutthroats, you can put Ramsey in the Bastard Girls and some of these squishier Bolton units now have the opportunity to get even more healing out of Okay. Um, out of them and uh like a dreadfort captain is a unit i always really want to stick somewhere but i can never really justify taking a dreadfort captain over like a one of the bastard boys so having yeah. ramsey have that prey for fear or prey on fear ability i think is is very interesting and uh, sorely needed for sure yeah i like the change especially because of his card skin collection uh skin collection uh is is um is a card that basically adds up uh, minus minus to panic up to mm -hmm. two so basically does vicious right um everywhere when you put out the tokens and that also fuels his prey on fear because it's easy it, it gets easier to heal off uh, off of skin collection or like um uh, all the other effects that that boltons can do so i really yeah, appreciate that. yeah I always chuckle laughing? when I hear that. Yeah, I always chuckle when I hear that. that skin collection. Card name, because skin collection is just, it reminds me of like a Silence of the Lambs movie. Me too. Me too. Yeah, it's just creepy, but funny. Yeah, what is it? It needs to, it, it needs to use the lotion or what is it? Rub like, the lotion on the skin or rub, rub, the again. Exactly. Yeah. Rub the lotion on the skin. <laughs> yeah, that's what Ramsey is saying. Like screaming mm -hmm. across the battlefield. Use the lotion. Yeah. Use the lotion. Making, making lampshades out of people. Yeah. So enough Ramsey. <laughs> so Steel Shanks Bolton, uh, Walton. Sorry, Steel mm -hmm. Shanks Walton. So Steel Shanks, um, he got Sundering, and we all know yeah. sun, 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 just just that, right? Um, but it's big. So just to have a commander just adding Sundering to whatever to Cutthroats, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. To Bolton Bastard Girls, also really bad. Um, Bad My, like it's bad, man. Ba ba yeah, man, bad, good, bad, yeah. Ba bad like it's really bad, bad. So okay, <laughs> so bad for your opponent, let's say. So mm. it's r really a good, good um, keyword that a that a commander brings. Um, so I think we will see him way more, and that's the thing I really appreciate about the whole S five that they that they bring up Steel Shanks up because, like in general, I would say most people were playing Ruse, right? And I think, yeah. and that's totally reasonable to do because like, especially the new, not the new, but the Bolton Roos now, which is better now than the neutrals Roos with his uh, intimidating presence is just a great commander. So, um, yep. but Steel Shanks now with Sundering, he might move up quite, quite the ranks. Um, so that's the thing I appreciate. What do you make of him? The yeah, I've Shanks? always... Yeah, I've always liked him. Um, I, I think it makes a lot of sense giving him Sundering. I mean, the guy's carrying like a eight foot long boar spear in his hand. It yeah. makes sense he should have a, uh, he should have Sundering. But I think before yeah. a lot of people were putting Steel Shanks in a more of a defensive unit, you know, putting him in the Black Guard or in the Spearman. And I think mm. now putting Sundering on him really makes me want to put him in Cutthroats yeah. or like you said, put him in the Bastard Girls because yeah. you can really just rip through something with with sundering yeah um and you don't have to wait for the harsh punishments anymore because you can you just start the game off with sundering and now you can put harsh punishments on one of your other offensive units um when you when you, when you get that first draw of harsh punishments so um yeah it, it's a really great change and yeah. steel shanks is is really more your aggressive in your face kind of commander so it, it makes a lot of sense that he gets sundering yeah 
Totally. And uh, especially, let's not forget about his card, Rush of Aggression. So especially mm -hmm. when we think Cutthroats, they get an auto 11, or the Boat and Bassa Girls, auto 12. So that puts a lot of pressure on your opponent just to be able to charge on a 6, just if just as you need it, especially for the Bolton Bastard Girls, I feel. Because if you have the Bolton Bastard Girls and they're shooting vulnerable, doing vulnerable on everyone, and then at a certain yeah. at a certain point in time when you need it, just pull out Rush of Aggression, charge in the 12, and um that could be strong. And then let's not forget but uh, forget about Jane. So you rush mm -hmm. in last turn, then you pull Jane, steal the round. And then you can go to swords and probably finish something off quite good. Um, if you yeah. do not kill it, it's quite crippled then. Um, yeah. So a lot of times I had Bolt and Bastard Girls charging and I didn't make it. Sometimes I didn't make it because some kind of cards were, were thrown at me as, you know, against Martells or anything. And if, if, if Bolt and Bastard mm -hmm. Girls are stopped by anything like a Corpse Pile, a Bad Roll certain cards right then they are quite in trouble quite quickly because they have a six defense and they're quite um vulnerable to basically everything except panic tests so um yeah, yeah. so i appreciate uh the change um and i'd like to see him way more in the future um that being said um we we also or we we again give give you uh, a season five tryout list um, which is this one, and obviously we use Steel Shanks. Uh, yeah, Steel Shanks in Cutthroats. So Steel Shanks in Cut in Cutthroats is is a thing you have to respect, right? There's no way yeah. you can just don't care about it or play around him. That's not possible, Be right? Because um, there's also uh, Price of Fear which Steel Shanks brings. And um, that's basically the option to do a free maneuver also. So you really have to respect this unit um, because there is quite mo some movement in the deck now and you have Rush of Aggression. So in, in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in a short amount of time, he can position himself and charge in for qu quite a distance. So this is something you have to respect. And the Dreadfort Archers with Sour Ellen, we, all, we already discussed. So Randall... What do you make of this list? How do you play it? And wh what what were uh, your thoughts behind this list? Yeah, so this list kind of makes the most of Steel Shanks' uh, set of tactics, cards, and abilities. I like Steel Shanks in a low morale unit like the Cutthroats because he has he has Iron Resolve, so he'll take fewer panic wounds, and he has a it gives him a better panic value. But mm -hmm. you kind of want him to fail panic tests a little bit sometimes, so you can you can have that pulse of uh, panic tokens to hand out and cutthroats are a pretty good home for that. Cause you can, you bring them to a six plus morale, which is kind of in still in the realm that they might fail a panic test here and there, but with iron resolve, it won't be quite as bad for them. Uh, and then steel shanks in the cutthroats, they're going to be doing uh, sundering vicious. And if you're attacking someone who hasn't activated yet, you're re-rolling and giving a vulnerable token. Yeah, vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. So these cutthroats can really fly through something pretty well. Mm -hmm. And then you have two maneuverable units to make use of uh, the cards you were talking about price of fear. So you can have flayed men get a free maneuver. You can have the bastard girls get a free maneuver. And then you have that rush of aggression to send one of those two units into a flank of an enemy with extra gusto mm. um, and then of course the dreadfort archers and uh then there's our suite of ncus here that uh we've we've debated quite a bit about which of these ncus to take uh between the two of us and uh you've you've explained the jane pool pick and yep. uh ramsey ramsey i love to bring ramsey ncu for all the extra healing especially when you have steel shanks and the relatively fragile cutthroats so Ramsey can help heal them up uh, along with the, the healing cards that we've already described in the video. And then the third NCU, this one's kind of a flexible choice here. I like bringing Walda for the extra weaken token, uh, also for for drawing out of uh, out of the tactics deck, whichever card you need, especially for Steel Shanks, because you there may be a time when you really need that rush of aggression. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like Walda for that for that reason. Yeah. And uh, Chris, I think you had some other ideas for what that third NCU could be 
for your more your play style um what, yeah. what would that be for you? yeah my my play style i i actually have to start with the dreadford archers because as i said like while while you were playing or like tend to have like a more aggressive thing with the archers shooting into the mm -hmm. rank which is which is totally like a good unit to do it um i have a tendency to to put at least one black guard in my list um mm -hmm. and i would probably with this list i would probably switch out the archers for a unit of uh black guard and uh, the reason mm -hmm. for that is is one i have something that i can like you know um w without a big risk push through the middle have the archers behind it, um, and Steel Shanks bring uh, Steel Shanks brings um, taunt as a uh, tactics card. So this one mm -hmm. is a well spent card on something like Black Guard because you do not want to charge into them, and uh, they can so they can also deal out some some tokens there, and um, that's probably a thing I would do and probably go off or, or take take out Ben Bones for free and put in Damon Dance for me or something that. Uh -huh. Yeah, makes the Vassar Girls even more uh, aggressive or more, um, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it gives them more die, gives them yeah, one more, more die on, on the range attack and then one more in the, the melee attack. Yeah, exactly. And they become quite, um, you have to respect also their long range attack then because, mm -hmm. but because without them, it's only one die, but still, I, I experienced that this one die really makes a difference in, in, in long range shooting because they will hit, but it's a difference if they hit five or four. It's a lot of times something, there, there is a difference. And uh, yeah. for the NCU, how we, uh, uh, to your question, um, a lot of times I play Jane, Ramsey, and Jacken because mm -hmm. Jacken is so um, um, adaptive in what the situation is. So let's say you're in like, you've got a big hit, or you see a lot, like like you have a really highly aggressive uh, uh, list coming against you. Uh, it's so good to have twice stalwart on a stick on two units, especially because morale on the Boltons is not that good. So to put in, yeah. you know, to to give to give uh, Blackguard um, uh, a morale of four, or you give, um, you know, whatever, or Bastard Girls, you can basically make him, you know, yeah, not fail a penny morale. test, whatever. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> Dragon Morale. Um, or, or you are on the attacking, you are, um, getting your momentum out. You do the tempo then, and then put two Ramsey out two fueled by slaughter in the right moment can also mm -hmm. be really devastating. Um, so I really like that. And even if you have something out, you have, you have, um, um, uh, uh, giants, for example, you have to play against giants. It's also good to have Jack and just for the precision, um, so he's so yeah. adaptive, especially with those strong NCUs bringing two really, really good influences. That's why mm -hmm. I use Jacken a lot of times, but I totally feel the Waldo Frey um, pulling Rush of Aggression early and stuff. I totally get that. So, but that would probably be my play style. So more, yeah, that's more aggressive. That's a little bit more defensive, you know, whatever. Try both yeah. out, guys, and just tell us in the comments down below which one works better. Uh, so Bolton's player, uh, Bolton's player, unite and <laughs> tell us, tell us which, which list might work better for you. All right. That brings us to the end of the video, Randall. And maybe right. what, are, what are your last, like, what is your main take? Uh, where will the Boltons be um, in S5? You already said in the beginning, they're he they were here. Now they're here. Um, but is there anything else to share for S5? No, I, I just... I, I I think they're going to be even more fun to play in season five. There, that's the thing. That's a, kind of the cool thing about this faction is even as as like relatively bad as they are at a high competitive level, at the local game store, these guys are just still a ton of fun to play. Yeah. And like, regardless of what you might hear about them at a high competitive level, they still do well at the local game store. Like, I still play these guys yeah. in my rotation of of factions, and I still do really well with them. I don't consider myself a amazing player. Um, and they're still just a lot of fun to play. So uh, yeah. even if they're not the most competitive faction out there, they're still going to see a ton of play in season five. And the developers keep giving them little tweaks and little buffs. So I think it'll that trend will continue. Yeah. And uh, I'm yeah I'm happy to keep playing them in season five and excited for what there is to come uh, for them in season five. So, yeah. 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 I'm happy for them. Cool. I can't and add anything to that except that I am always always 
eager to 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 pull out the boltons to play at the local game store or like in for intro matches or whatever we do because yeah. i just love the sculpts you know i love the flatemen i love the bolton bastard girls um if you magnetize them to be honest but mm -hmm. uh <laughs> because dogs won't run in like straight lines <laughs> you know you've you know you you know where i'm getting at but yeah yeah so I can't add to that, except that I really need to, to uh, start painting soon. You have an amazing army painted, so I will... Um, Thanks. Yeah, so I will uh, need to catch up for that. All right, guys, that's it on the Boltons on S5. Um, thanks for watching. The first the season five in general. Season five is a wrap. Yeah, exactly. It's a wrap now. That was the last one. So thanks for, you know... Uh, staying with us, watching the whole series, maybe. And um, again... Drop a comment down below. Tell us what you think. And uh, let's meet on the Discord too, maybe. And uh, there's nothing more to say than until we meet again. Roll those crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.